my Aunt Marilyn does not like to be called a girl. And I called her a girl one day, playing with her. Hey girl, she was like, don't call me a girl, I'm a woman. <laughs> Suzanne? Yeah? Do you mind being called a girl? Did, did, did I ever what? Do you mind being called a girl? Um, um, yes, yes. No, so not like girl. Like, oh, hi, girl over there. <laughs> Never mind, you're missing the whole point. <laughs> like when, when Brendan says, yeah. you know, yo, me and my girl is coming through. That I'd means- I'd rather be called a lady. Okay, okay. Yes, All right. me and my lady. Okay. I like that. All right. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm a woman, you know what I say? The woman side of me handles business, but the girl side of me twirls, dips, and does it and has fun. And Wendy is the perfect teacher to teach the first lady how to dip it and do it. So we went away. And we had a great time. And of course, what's vacation without turning it up at the club? And I make no secret, I love to go to the club. I love to get my drink on. I love the loud music. I love when the sparklers are put in, you know, bottles and, you know, and girls dancing and stuff. And like, who was in the club? Leonardo DiCaprio and, um, and Rick Ross. And, and a lot of young people, oh yes, Old Miss Wendy knows how to dip it in zoo and honey. And I was wearing a romper. And didn't get home until four. Honey, I didn't roll in until four o'clock the night that we went to see uh, Jeezy and we had the best time. And DJ Boof was there, and um, Charles, he came from security. Yes, Charles um, came. Well, you know, we asked him to come. And uh, the club was packed, and Jeezy was there. And I might have been the old lady in the club, but I was dipping it and doing it. What? Had my drinks. No hangover. Wasn't driving. Mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine having a 29 year old son or daughter. I just couldn't, even though I know. Realistically, a lot of my peer group has kids going off to college. You know, if you're 48, 49, 50 years old, if anything, maybe I'm lagging behind by only having a 13 year old. <laughs> only, only, I don't know what I would say to a 29 year old. And I definitely don't know what I would say to like a five year old granddaughter at this particular point. I still feel like dipping into it. I, I don't know, I still feel. I still feel too. Too youthful to have a 30-year-old, um, uh, you know, child. I look at news people, local ones and national ones. This is why I couldn't, remember I told you I was gonna be a newscaster or a radio personality. Right. The reason why I didn't choose news, for several reasons, you know, once I got to know it, is because I could not live up to the credibility factor of it. I still like to have fun and go to the club. <laughs> and dip it in and do it. And dip it. <laughs> I've tried to invite my parents over for holiday, but they're in their late fi- <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, dear. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so insulted. I know, when I was 23, being in 50s seemed old as hell too. But now that I'm here, I'm here to tell you. 50 year olds are dipping it and zooing it these days. What a beautiful suit. Thank you, Altazor, baby. Uh, oh. Yes. Who? Altazor. Okay. Yes. She said, okay. <laughs> let's, let's give you some shoe, shoe cam. cam. Oh, yes, okay, please. Dipping it and doing it. Yeah, I felt like kind of give you like daytime business look today. Yes, yes, ma'am. Cool outfit. Oh my gosh. I am so wearing that. <laughs> uh, look at old Miss Wendy. Zipping it and doing it. Shaquille has really um, reminded me of who I used to be. Which is an animal lover. I used to be until my career got too busy. You know, 
know what I'm saying? When you're single and clicking around New York, hitting the clubs, and I'm on the I'm on the radio. I'm I can fly this place and that place. I got my money, my career. Like, what do I want with a pet? Picking up dog poop and trying to Febreze before, you know, uh, you know, maybe a new boyfriend comes. Like, really? A pet hotel while I run off to Miami at 25 years old to dip it and do it. You know what the 20s are for? Yeah. Zipping and zooing. <laughs> Joy C says, Wendy, um, I have a fling from the past who is now interested in something long-term. We both were dipping it and doing it ooh, a year ago. So we never took each other seriously. Now he's reaching out to me because he wants something more. I've always been attracted to him, but he was a player. How can I take him seriously given the past? I'm 29 and he's 31. I don't have time to waste, so what do I do? Thanks for your help, Wendy. 29 and 31 are about the times that you really realize that you want something more out of relationships than just to dip it and do it. And it's natural for you to dip it and do it all through your 20s up until about that point when all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'd like to have a steady boyfriend or a steady girlfriend. I say you have a conversation with this guy and see where it goes. He might be saying the same thing about you. How can he take you seriously? Because you were dipping it and doing it too. Um, doesn't mean that, that you'll be a bad girlfriend just like it doesn't mean he'll be a bad boyfriend or husband. Dipping it and doing it is natural. As a matter of fact, I'd be scared of somebody who wasn't zipping it and doing it. <laughs> Hi. So look, so you were holding hands all while I was telling my, oh, excuse me. <laughs> you, were tell, you were holding hands the whole time I was doing Hot Topics and it caught my eye you were there in the front row. So now what is your problem? Um, he's very smart, very handsome. Also very young. How old are you? I'm 37. And how old is he? He just turned 22. Oh! So whenever we get into an argument, I always say, <laughs> what do I always say? I say, You're 20, dude, what are you gonna know? <laughs> and ask Wendy. Come That's here. That's what I say. Ask right. Wendy. Really? I'm yes. part of your household? Yes. <laughs> I don't want to be no part to this. Oh. Sarah, have you ever been married? No. Do you want to get married? Yes. Do you want children? Yes. Young man, do you want to get married? Yes. To Sarah? Yes. Do you want children? Yes. And how long have you been dating? A year now. A year. What do your parents say? Because I would have a conniption. <laughs> My mom's pretty modern, so she's more like, whatever you want to do, you can do. As far as the right decision, so yeah. Okay. I think she is. And, and what, do you, what do your friends and family say? <laughs> <laughs> They're but conservative. Conservative, okay. Yeah. So what's your question? So do you think he's too young for me? Yes. Who <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, I do. But we're in love. I know you're in love, but remember what you were like when you were 22? I know. Zipping it and zooing it. <laughs> and, and everybody deserves the right to zip it and zoo it. So maybe if you don't get married, but if you just continue dating, do you live together, Sarah? I'm actually on the West Coast, and he lives on the East Coast. Wait, 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 I know what? Have a lot of issues. Where do you live? Boston. And where do you live? San Fran. Yes. I, I say this relationship is doomed. Geographically and age-wise. We've known each other for over 30-something years, or nine seasons if you watch the show. I've been consistent with this. Your 20s are for zipping it, zooing it, and getting your career going on. <laughs> then, your 30s are for, fig or your early 30s, by the way, are for figuring out how you can meld both together. And we're not good at either, it's a mess. But then you meet other women who are melding and all of a sudden you don't feel alone. That notion of being pregnant at 23, I don't understand. Shout out to all the 23-year-old pregnant girls. Okay. <laughs> well, good luck with the rest of your life. Because um, in my opinion, your 20s are for learning how to change a tire, buy, buy your first condo, 
putting a little something into a 401k, not a lot, cause I know you're busy. I know, I know you love your style, but doing a little something like that. Your 20s are, as a woman, your 20s are for you and you only, not a baby and not marriage. Your 20s are for you. Hey, I'm dipping it in Zoe. In my Bentley truck. Hey. The one up top. Um, that mother, Chris loves to party. And the reason that she loves to party is because when Chris was 22, she married Robert Kardashian. This is why I always say marriage is not for girls in their 20s. You're supposed to fist bump and duty wop and stanky leg and back that thing up and work on your career all through your 20s. So by the time you're, you're married, you're not looking crazy partying with Joe Francis and everybody else at 57 years old, dipping it and doing it and... Anyway. Oh, it is you. Josh, bow tie guy. How you doing, Wendy? Fine, thank you. Mm -hmm. Where are you from? I'm from Orlando, Florida. That's where I zip it and zoo it. Okay. And Brittany writes, hey, Wendy. I was at the Del Mar horse race the day after the SB Awards and got to meet the, <laughs> the fabulous Caitlyn Jenner. I do have to say, along with your voice, though, your hands could have their own zip code. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I blew her a kiss and she invited me up to her box. She's one of the classiest women I've ever had the pleasure to meet. Caitlin is clearly enjoying her new life, zipping and doing it all around LA. She was recently at the Abbey Saturday night until early in the morning. We love you, Caitlin. This is a grown, sexy talk show, and I know you all don't give a damn about another Justin Bieber story either, do you? But this one is good. <laughs> Come on now. Justin and his dad, Jeremy, were extremely abusive to a crew on a private jet. Aww. Now hold on. So the jet was coming from Toronto to New Jersey, Teterboro Airport. That's where the private planes land. It was Justin, Justin's dad, Jeremy, right here, and 10 of Justin's friends. First of all, the plane was detained for four hours at Teterboro Airport because, you know, you, know, you can't just fly around in a, in a private plane and think you're still not going to get searched. Like, if they smell some weed, they're holding everybody. So at Teterboro over in Jersey, they smelled some weed. And they detained Justin for four hours, Justin and his crew. All right, there was no weed found. But something is always rotten in Denmark with him, right? <laughs> Reportedly, Justin and his friends were smoking so much weed that the pilot was forced to wear an oxygen mask. <laughs> and they were so mean, nasty, and stinking to the stewardess, you know, that the pilot invited her up to the front of the cockpit, which to me, that sounds like another day in a pilot's life. <laughs> do, you, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, my thought on this is, is how is Justin ever supposed to do right if his parents are encouraging him allegedly to do wrong? You know, the dad Jeremy's only 38 years old, so you gotta figure, at 38, you know, you're still out there dipping it and doing, ow! You know, you're, you're a kid yourself. And he's trying to be a father, but he's more of a pal. Justin's behavior has been the worst since they've been hanging out together. Dads aren't supposed to be friends. Dads aren't supposed to be taking long pulls in private planes with their sons. Moms aren't supposed to be... Moms aren't supposed to be leaving the house at midnight saying I'm going to meet Prince on a Sunday. <laughs> but being a parent these days, you, you know, being a parent these days is very difficult. We all know because it's a different kind of parenting thing. Like, I, I know I'm not like my mom. Are you like your mom? No. Like, in, in my mind, I'm as strict as her in a lot of ways, but I'm way cooler, you know. <laughs> For my son... I want to be cool just because that's society that we live in. You're supposed to moisturize. This is the new 50. It's not like you're supposed to dip it. And then when your kids see you dip it and do it, then they're like, mm-hmm, well, maybe we can get away with smoking weed in front of her. And that's when you have to quickly 
let them know who's in charge. I'm a mom. It's been nearly five months, and Lamar reportedly still is refusing to sign divorce papers because he's jealous, allegedly, of Chloe's relationship with French Montana. Well, excuse me. How about the relationships that you've allegedly had before Chloe got with French and while you were still married, sir? Now, look. You all have no kids. You have no property together. You have two kids looking at you like you're crazy. You've got all us out here looking at you like you're crazy. And if you do come and play for the New York team that is allegedly interested in you, get used to seeing French and Chloe around, because they'll be dipping it and doing it all on the lights of Broadway. <laughs> crazy. If you ever want a chance to get back with somebody, if you've separated, and there's nothing wrong with separation. Sometimes separation is one of the healthiest things for particular relationships. But while you're separated, you can't dip it and do it with other people. You have, to, you have to stay low, under the radar, and off hot topics. Music mogul, former American Idol uh, judge, and all around legend, L.A. Reid abruptly stepped down, is what they're saying as the head of Epic Records after an assistant claimed that he sexually harassed her. And I don't know her name, I don't know what she looks like, all I know is that she does come from a family of means. And you might say, well then why is it that she settled for being an assistant? You know, if she comes from a family of means, she could work for the company, whatever her family does for money. But sometimes people just wanna be so close to the light, and the light is entertainment. You know, like if her dad is a hedge fund person, well, that sounds like a boring job. You know what I mean? It's a, if you want the excitement of, you know, zipping it and zooing it, <laughs> entertainment's the way to be, and, and certainly he's a dipper and zooer. And so I'm gonna be following the story, uh, but, I, but I, again, I am shocked, I'm shocked. Trouble, allegedly, with a third party regarding A-Rod and J-Lo. According to TMZ, the woman is from Alex's past. Oh. She, well, who doesn't have a past? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, who claimed that uh, they had a fling three years ago. What big deal? <laughs> what does that have to do with J-Lo? They only been together for four months. And at least two of those months are a test. You know when you get with somebody and you're not sure whether it's gonna be on? <laughs> so you're still zipping and zooming? <laughs> You know, you, <laughs> just saying. Gwen Stefani and yeah. Gavin Rossdale's divorce is finalized. Yeah. This leaves the lane clear for her and Blake Shelton yes. because their divorce with yeah. he and Miranda's divorce was like overnight. Yeah, it literally it's been took done. two seconds. Rumor has it, as soon as the judge signs off on this, this divorce settlement now for Gwen and Gavin, he may be proposing anytime. so. She better not accept. Oh. Uh, <laughs> you, no. you think she should wait? I feel as though after a woman gets divorced, she needs time to get to know herself and yeah. also dip yeah. it and do it. I, no, I, I, this is unhealthy. When a woman meets somebody new, I'm happy for her. Like, okay, she's gonna be okay. She's not, all, as long as she's not all in love and then suddenly pregnant. Like, you know, you have a good time popping and locking and zipping and zooming. <laughs> I'm so hungover. I went, I went to the lounge last night and drank a drink called the How You Doing. <laughs> Honey. It was my app release party, actually. It was a celebration. Uh -huh. And, okay, so that's Marco. Marco, you know, is my audience hype man, and Marco was celebrating his birthday last night, so he was there. Yes. <laughs> and then, I want to apologize to DJ Omanaya because here's what happens. You know, when I walk in the lounge, you know, I like music. Nice Bruno Mars playing, and you know, twerking and shaking and shaking and twerking. <laughs> but after a few how you doings, my musical taste turns that of a 20 year old boy. <laughs> I need to hear stuff with bass and greasy lyrics. When the movie got greasy, did people start to leave? <laughs> no, I no, just, no, it was fine. Yeah. I, we have, we've heard those words before. No, but a lot of people at the party, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. When Raekwon starts to cussing. Uh -huh. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but then you see me over there dipping and right. doing. <laughs> right. You don't know whether to leave or whether to stay. <laughs> Norman? Norman. Norman. Uh huh. How was we doing? We was doing it. Uh. Okay. <laughs> Well, that's it that I have from those. Then the rest of the pictures are just me at my comedy show, having fun in shorts and a t-shirt.
dipping it and doing it. <laughs> that was me on Coney Island yesterday too, by the way. Oh, please, dipping and doing. So now you're working on an album. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, back in the studio. Finally. Yeah. Uh huh. Finally. Are they gonna be all sad songs? Oh no no no! That's okay. why I chose not to write it all myself because you guys would have been depressed. Okay. Okay. So no, the the song is called Get Up, and you know, and there's writers, okay? Because okay. I what? Because what I was writing was, you know, oh sad. my god, oh, it was horrible. It was hung jury all over again. Okay. Yeah. Oh, they never heard of hung jury album '98. Oh, depressing piece of work. Yes, uh, we don't like depressing music here. Oh, we like to no. dip it and zoo it. <laughs> yeah. Dippin' and...